This is video 27.1. We will be looking at time dilation and length contraction. The question. A subatomic particle called a pion has an average rest frame lifetime of 26 nanoseconds. Rest frame means that if the pion is sitting still and you measure how long it takes for it to decay after it's been created, it's 26 nanoseconds. And a beam of accelerated pions are measured in the lab. We'd like to know how fast are the pions moving if their average lifetime is measured to be 48 nanoseconds in the lab. And how far can the pion travel before decaying as measured in the laboratory frame? And how far can it travel as measured in its own rest frame? First, we'll calculate the speed of the pion. Now, clocks moving relative to an observer are measured by that observer to run more slowly. So time dilation implies that the decay time in the rest frame is less than the decay time as measured in the lab frame. So if next to the pion there's a little clock which ticks from 0 to 26 nanoseconds and you're in the lab frame watching that clock, you'll see it go from 0 to 26, but compared to your own clock, your own clock will go to 48 nanoseconds in the case presented in this question. Now gamma is always greater than 1, so as a mnemonic to help me to remember the time dilation formula, I know that delta T lab has to be greater than delta T rest, and since gamma is greater than 1, there has to be this relationship between them. In other words, gamma is equal to delta T T lab over delta T rest, which is 48 over 26, but we're not going to plug that in yet. We're just going to use the definition of gamma, which is 1 over 1 minus v squared over c squared, and use this to solve for v. At the end, we'll plug in our numbers. So the first step will be to take the reciprocal of both sides. And then we'll square both sides to get rid of that square root. Moving forward, we'll have v squared over c squared on a side by itself. Then we can multiply both sides by c and take the square root. This is the result of our calculation, and it gives v in terms of gamma. The quantity inside the parentheses inside the square root is 1 over gamma. Delta t rest is 26 nanoseconds. Delta t lab is 48 nanoseconds. They're both nanoseconds, so we don't have to convert to seconds or anything. And we get a, our velocity, 2.52 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now let's find the distance traveled in the laboratory frame. We just use V delta T and make sure to use delta T in the lab, the velocity of the pion we just found. We plug in the numbers, and we find that the pion traveled 12.1 meters from the point that it was created to the point that it was decayed. Now let's find the distance traveled in the pion's rest frame. The same formula applies, except this is a bit of a trick question, because in the pion's rest frame, the pion is stationary, it's not moving, so in its own rest frame, 
it does not travel a single centimeter. And that concludes video 27.1. Check out PhysicsX on the app stores. This revolutionary physics app for smartphones and tablets contains over 100 videos and 500 multiple choice questions designed by education experts. It's been proven to improve scores for intro college physics, AP physics, MCAT physics, and more. Just look for the blue icon.